and go for it. All right. And now I have to figure out how to share my screen. Okay, so I did some things to the slides and pushed them. So hopefully these are the, um, okay, so functionals. And um, I, uh, I wanted this chapter because I wanted to learn this particular, I signed up for this book club to learn this particular chapter. <laughs> so I've been waiting, you know, eight weeks to, to get here. So I'm glad to be here. And I did learn a ton by preparing today. So I appreciate the motivation. Okay, so um, this is in the book that functionals are functions that take functions as input and return a vector as output. I have a little bit of trouble with that because, well, maybe I just don't know what the word vector means, but I feel like the output can be any of a variety of things and that map in particular usually returns list as output. Um, and I know that vectors are lists, but I'm not sure all lists are vectors. So I, I would have said here functions take functions as input and return a variety of things as output, but I don't know if you guys have different feelings about that. I think that gets back to the very first chapter where I think I realized it, it was the same thing for me. It's like, like pretty much everything in R is a, is a vector. Although uh -huh. we, we think of certain one dimensional things as vector, yeah. but actually everything's a vector. So I think that's kind of what they're getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, and for me, like reading through this and thinking about what it's doing, um, I love the first bullet point under benefits to me, that's like the most important thing. It's like that we're separating what we're doing as a function, um, apart from the iteration piece. And so I, I really like that. Um, and so that's been on my mind. Okay. Oh, I'm going to open the chat so I can see it while we're talking. A list is a recursive vector. Yeah. yeah I see that. Okay. So um, this is the basic of map, which is map is the building block of, um, of this chapter of functionals. Um, I, on the previous slide, you saw that, you know, there's L apply and V apply and whatnot. Those are the old school ones that I'm not planning to talk much about today. Um, and, and map really has a lot of fantastic characteristics. Um, but the idea behind map is that it, um, takes a, a vector as a, um, as its first argument and it puts that argument or, you know, series of arguments into the function F and that F can also have additional arguments that seen in blue. So this image, um, really captures exactly what's going on with map and, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, right. We said this a little bit, you know, that, that, um, we're focusing on what the function is instead of the recursiveness, um, you know, that it returns a list, um, but that it can be a variety of other things. Um, and that the length of the input equals the length of the output. That's really nice, you know, which is seen in this, in this image right here. Um, there's a lot of extensions and you can have additional arguments, um, not all these are true for the L apply families. Family. Okay, so um, so like you said, map uh, by default returns a list, but it can return um, you know a character string, a, a double, an integer, a logical, which are seen you know some of these little examples here. Um, uh, another thing that we see right away here that was not in that previous picture um, that. I hadn't really put together um, previous to doing this work is that the arguments in map are um, defined or labeled dot X and dot F. And that's really important for me um, in some of the other pieces that we'll, we'll get to, but that kind of really being thoughtful about, okay, that that argument has a name. Sometimes I get hung up on that with ggplot as well. Like some of the, you just don't have to name anything in, the, in ggplot. And then you're like, wait a minute. Okay. We need the names. What are the names? Like, like even just AES is, um, I don't know what it is, but it's, what is the name of AES? It's like, form. it's not formula, but it's something that I wouldn't expect. Anyway. Mapping? Right. Is that what it is? That mapping equals AES? Yeah, that might be right. Yeah, right. I think it is. Yeah, which is, you can tell that I have no idea. <laughs> like, uh, so I have to look it up every time, right? Anyway. Okay, so here's this function um, x plus y, and that we want to put this one, two, three into this function, and the default is a list, but that if we make it into a um, into a double, then it'll be a, a vector or logical. Um, this is a, a slightly different function, is na, um, et cetera. 
Okay. Um, so here's where I learned a good amount. Um, I had a lot of fun, I guess, going through this and I, I put some on the Slack channel. So some of you may have already seen, um, Oh, wait, this isn't, oh yeah, it is down there. So some of you already may have seen what, what my thought process is. Uh, but there's this idea of like, what is that second function at, uh, dot F, you know, or what are the options for that function? So in the previous slide, we just, you know, wrote a function and then we called that function. So we said dot F equals triple, that, that is the function. Um, but there's some alternative ways that that second argument can be specified. Um, and that, you know, has some benefits depending on your, your needs. Uh, so the first way is by using what's called an anonymous function. Well, I don't know which is the anonymous function, but anyway, is this an anonymous function? Like here, the function, like it's not named. Oh, got it, got it, right, because yeah. it doesn't have a name. That's why it's called. An yeah, argument. you are passing it as an argument, but it does not have a name. Perfect, okay. It's also one-liners. So the, it's not it's not use curly brace to have uh, multiple expression. Right. There's no curly brace around the what the function. I is don't think is all. Uh, yeah, I think all anonymous functions should be one-liners, but I'm not sure about that. I don't okay. think so. I think an anonymous function is just a function that doesn't have a name, because okay. you could easily put curly brackets in and make it a three-line function. Oh, okay. a name. good point. So I would say it's anonymous. Okay. Good point. Okay. Thanks. Right. So um. Okay, so anyway, right, again, like this previous triple function, all we've done is we've copied the the content of the function and put it into that, you know, argument. So here's the content of the function. Um, the function happens to be the mean function with a particular um, argument for removing missing values. But okay, thank you for that clarification that anonymous just means that the it doesn't have a name, right? I've created this new function. Um, Okay, so if we're using these anonymous functions, we don't have to put that function X in there. We can use, you know, I always call this a tilde. They call it a twi twiddle, the, whoever whoever did the right before me, I always called it a tilde. Um, anyway, so, but whatever. Can... <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm not, I'm not American, so English is not my first language. And I always call it tilde too, just so Someone please just um it, like say the pronunciation. Is it twiddle or is it tilde? Because I, I just want to learn how to pronounce it. It is. It is, is it tilde or tilde? It's a tilde. Um, and depending if you say tilde or tilde, it depends on where in the world you come from. I think just how you like your accent. I pronounce it tilde. Um, and it is the 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 shape is a tilde. Um, I think what they're referring to is in this context. They call it a twiddle, huh. but in in the real world, if you're asking <laughs> someone to find it on their keyboard, you say it's the tilde on your keyboard, and no one knows what that means either. So I also call it the squiggle uh, yeah. when I'm teaching. <laughs> uh, but I I, think I have to admit, tilde the twiddle made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that whatever you call that thing, I'm going to keep calling it a tilde. The tilde can take the place of this idea of function x. Um, and so they've done that here and, and you get the exact same thing. Now it turns out that mean is already a function. And so we don't need to, we, it already has a name. And so we don't need to use anonymous functions and we don't need to use the tilde. And if we wanted this extra specification of, a, of an additional argument, then um, the map, the map um, family has an additional argument specification as we saw in the image with the, the blue box in that first graphic. So that's, um, that's, that's all good. Okay, so then um, then I spent a little bit of time because I was really trying to dig down into these anonymous functions and I was really trying to understand um, what was happening with the anonymous functions. And so I tried a bunch of things that, um, um, that you know, different versions to see what would happen. So the function that we're going to be working with here is the length of the number of unique um, entries in each column. So um, maybe we should back up a second and, and talk about empty cars, which we've used on this entire page. So empty cars is a data frame. And so as we've learned previously in this, um, in this book club, a data frame is a list of vectors. And so because it's a list of vectors, that means um, each, um, 
So each of these you know, it's almost like we want to turn it on its on its side because this top one is like the first column of empty cars. And this next orange one is the second column of empty cars. So when we're mapping this argument, it's like we're talking about what is that, what is that first argument made up of? And it turns out when you have a data frame, it's made up of, you know, it's a list of vectors. So each of these square boxes would be a separate vector. Um, which is, you know, maybe not quite what this image portrays because, you know, you'd want to put it on its side or or whatever. But um, anyway, that's what that's what's happening in the empty cars, which is why the function is being applied to each variable separately. OK, you probably all knew that. Anyway, so the function we're interested in is the length of the vector, which tells you the number of which tells you the unique entries in that column. So what I've highlighted here will tell you the number of unique entries. So unique tells you the unique entries, length tells you the number of unique entries. And so this first um, this first function is exactly what we had above um, where I, I don't have the dot F equals, um, but because it's the second argument and that's the way R works. Um, you can just you can just put in the the value to the second argument without calling the function or the argument name, um, and you get you know there are twenty five different miles per gallon. There are only three different cylinder types, et cetera. Okay, so then I'm like, okay, I you know I understand this, and now I take out the function part and I put in the tilde because the tilde replaces the function part. And I notice right away, um, as you can see down here, that there's a difference between the argument. So now, instead of, you know, defining this function, which, you know, I could have put, like, I could have made in, in the first call, I could have said function, rainbows and unicorns, length, unique, rainbows and unicorns, right? Like, I can call the argument to the function that I'm creating, I can call that whatever I want. That's that's like a, a function, <laughs> too many ways. Um, and that's not true when you use the tilde to replace the function x. So when you use the tilde to replace the function x, then all of a sudden you are requiring that you're using the name of the argument in the map call. And that argument is named dot x. Yeah, I think we're gonna see that letters in meta programming. It's also related or with work or even like all the tidyverse work on kind of this basis of uh, what how do you name stuff and and link stuff to the names. So uh, I think this is like you can't change the the dot x or the dot because at one times when you use the formula syntax, it's gonna it. It gonna need to link the correct stuff together, and it's probably use some depart substitute somewhere or a way to uh, know like uh, a name is becoming an expression and stuff like that. So I think we're gonna see that later. So if you are not understanding fully, be sure me also, and I think it's gonna be later in the book. Yeah, yeah. This was this was a big part of like what I'd been struggling with because when I was writing my own functions and sometimes I would use the tilde, I, I had a lot of trouble understanding what was going here because sometimes I would put dot x, sometimes I would you know leave out something, and you're going to see that in these examples here that I was playing around with. But anyway, so um, it's also true that they've written this map family of functions to take any number of arguments, which we're gonna see in the, like the P map and the map two and whatnot. And therefore there's a direct relationship between dot X and dot dot one. So there's a dot X, a dot Y, and they correspond exactly to dot dot one and dot dot two. But then the dot X and the dot Y run out. There's no dot Z, there's no dot, you know, ABC, whatever. But there is like, in as far as I can tell, there's infinitely many dot dot one, dot dot two, dot dot three, dot dot four, dot dot five. So you can keep going with arguments depending on how, you know, what your function is doing. So, so in this particular kind of simplified setting, the dot X and the dot dot one um, correspond to exactly the same thing. And, and we get this, um, we get this. And then, you know, like in the chat there, 
it turns out, I don't know, for backwards compatibility, I don't really know why, but the, they've, they've also allowed this dot X to mean the same thing, um, which is which is what's used in the um, Magritter pipe. So, um, you know, the old sort of tidyverse pipe uses that dot to like carry over an argument into a function. Yeah, I guess, I guess. But they also said in the book, don't do this one. <laughs> they were like, it, it exists and it'll work, but don't do it. Okay, so um, so I just tried a couple of other things just again to make sure I understood what was happening. And um, and I and I put in length um because again at this point I was still really struggling to understand when you use function, when you use tilde, and when you use nothing. Like I didn't really understand when you use nothing. And so I was like, well, I know that sometimes I use nothing. And so let's try it on empty cars length. And it's like, okay, that works. And so, um, so the length tells me the length of each vector. So it's, it's not the task at hand. It tells me 32 for every single one. Um, and then this is what I put on the Slack channel. I was confused because I was also trying various other things like length unique. And it, it didn't give me an error. It gave me um, this thing that I was like, oh. This, <laughs> so, is super, this one is super funny. <laughs> so, um, so it turns out that, um, that you, uh, R has length of functions. So the length of the function unique is one. Um, so maybe I should, um, you know what? I should have shared my... I, I want to go to R here. I don't know how to share. I, I'm going to stop and then reshare. Hold on. Um, share. Okay. Um, so length of unique is one. And so, you know, unique is just, is just a function. And so it's kind of weird to say that it has a length, but it does have a length. So what the map did was it calculated this um, this value as is just one. And then apparently when you map one to your data frame, it, it'll tell you the first entry in each. Um, so that was an interesting thing for me also in the sense that like, oh, if I wanted to pull out the seventh row, of my data frame, I could map my data frame comma seven. So that was, that was, I also learned that as well. Um, but then, you know, these were my tries that didn't work. And again, I was trying to figure out when the function didn't need the tilde and when it did and what that argument was. And so, you know, here's some, here's some mistakes. Um, wait, that, oh, I think because X is defined as something. This gives me an error when I don't run it. That's interesting. I should have removed X before I ran this. Um, but the this one doesn't work because, so, okay, though, so this is what I figured out and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. So when the function is named, it can work as the argument. It just is the, is the function. Um, but this is not a named function. Function of function is not a named function. And so it's like, you you just have to kind of, at least me, I have to figure out in my head, like it feels like they're named functions because they're named, they're named length and they're named unique, but the compilation of them is not a named function. And so that's why, you know, it it doesn't need the tilde or the defining of a function beforehand. Um, and so, I, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say one way I think of it too is that if you are putting the round brackets on a function, you're using that function. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the round brackets, then you're referring to a function. So in that first example with length and there's no round brackets, you're saying go map using the length function. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to put round brackets on the length function, you're essentially saying, okay, we're going to use this length function this way. And in that case, you're essentially creating a new system totally. using the function does it, that's how I think of it I, yeah. I'm not sure if that makes sense yeah no it totally does it totally does yeah on on if you just use length it knows the object function if you use length with the <clears throat> the parenthesis it's the core 
Yeah. It's like calling it as opposed to just referring to it. And it, it's funny. So immediately when I saw the length unique one, I, I immediately was like, well, there's a problem there because you're using length, but you're not using unique. And I was, I had no idea why you got a weird result. I just knew that you were going to get a weird result. <laughs> you weren't, you were using length, but not referring to I you. Like that. I knew that was going to be weird somehow. I didn't know why or what. <laughs> so it was really interesting to see how that worked yeah. out. Yeah, good, good, good example. And uh and mixing stuff i think it's great <clears throat> yeah yeah i'm gonna go back and switch these so that i remove x because i think it's coming from somewhere else higher up in the in the book down file because this bottom one should have given me an error as well but i think there's an x that exists somewhere in the environment unfortunately and who knows what i don't know what it's doing anyway okay um yeah <laughs> okay so um so uh like we said map the the base of map makes it into a list um and uh there are ways to get around that i saw people talking in the in the chat I, i'm not really reading the chat right now it's too hard for me to read and talk at the same time but i saw somebody refer to mat map underscore um data frame or dfr and i think it's it's um I think the word is superseded. I don't know if somebody already said this. It's not deprecated, which means it goes away, but it's superseded, meaning they prefer you to do something else. And that's to just do the standard map, um, but then do list R bind at the end or list C bind at the end. So, so take your list and then create the data frame by doing R bind or C bind. Um, but anyway, if you want, um, if you want to um, keep the, the input exactly the same as the output, you can use modify. Um, and so you have a data frame here, which just has, you know, two columns. And if you map, um, you know, the times three function, uh, then you get a list out. If you modify, then, then you get the same shape as you started. But note that um, modify doesn't change DF. So I just printed DF to screen again, and it's still the same. It's not modified. You'd have to type right here. You have to say DF gets modify, da, da, da. And, and that's um, words that I see and read, but I don't have a full grasp of, which is like modify in place or um, there's like two different um, framings, but Anyway, it doesn't change the value of DF. It just prints it to screen and so, or prints it. And then if you if you want, then it um uh, then it um somebody oh yeah, that's true. Anyway, okay. Moving on here. Um Here are just a couple more examples. And a lot of these, you know, I took the um, slides that previous people have written. So, um, you know, that you can use um, map sort of within other contexts. So, you know, um, you can map head. Um, so this is, you know, taking um, empty cars and making it the first argument of map because we've got the pipe. So, um, and then using the header command and then mapping again and, and whatnot. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go for this example. Okay, so um, one of the best parts about map is that it has this family of functions. And um, the one we've been talking about most is the base map. And it takes one argument and it outputs a list. Um, the um, there are many, many columns like between list and modify, which are map, um, lo logical, map, character, map, double, all those, you know, that's what that dot, dot, dot. And we've sort of already talked about that. Um, there's map that takes two arguments and then map that takes as many arguments as you want. So that's map two and P map. And, um, and again, map two and P map use those you know, dot x dot y for map two, and then dot dot one dot dot two dot dot three for for p map. So so those are both um, really powerful if you're putting in multiple arguments. Um, and then there's something called i map, which takes an argument. It's kind of like p, it's kind of like map two, where you have two arguments, but the second argument, the you know the dot y or whatever, is always the um, is always the 
well, it's it's some kind of indexing, sort of depending on what your object is. Okay, so let's go through some of those. Um, so, um, what else do we have here? I think these are just. Oh, okay. So this is just showing, right, right, right. Okay. So this is just showing the difference between um, mapping where you have a single argument and you're squaring each of those, each of those values um, and map two, where you have two arguments and you are, um, you're taking one squared, two to the third, three to the fourth, exactly. Um, so you've got, you've got this power and you can see that in this autonomous function um, that they're using the argument names, which are dot X, you know, to the power of dot Y. All right. um, I think we've already talked about this a little bit, that map has a bunch of um, nice properties. Uh, I haven't talked about this, that it's written in C and so it's really um, quite efficient um, and it's usually faster than the apply functions. Okay, um, so um, so walking is something different. Walking happens when you want to um, use the function for what it does and not what it outputs. Okay, so a couple of examples are you know printing to screen or um, writing to you know writing writing a file. And I think I did. Oh, that's not here. Somewhere there's, we also use it for um, ggplot, cre creating a plot without the, without all the side effects. So you can see that, um, I, I don't really know why cat plots or has these values, but you know, cat has these values and clearly we don't want them. Do you want to tell us, Olivier? Not, not this one, but like, it's mostly like, usually like when you are reading a bunch of file or writing a bunch of file, uh, I, before I was using for loop because uh, when my my instinct is when I was using side effect, uh, go for a for loop. But no, I will definitely uh, try the work function. So it's it's I think it's a bit better the way like it's um, because the for loop is sequential by definition. I'm not sure. For example, the walk is sequential. It can probably be paralyzed, and it can probably like uh, because it probably use a random access. So it's mm -hmm. like an a for loop, it's gonna need to 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 do the first step, then do the second one, et cetera, which is very good for debugging, but it's slow. Yeah. Uh, and like with this work, if you are writing a bunch of files, I don't know, Cat is probably writing a bunch of something. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, printing a bunch of sit, uh, something inside of the, the, the terminal, mm -hmm. but uh, writing is make, make it more easy. I mean, write, writing CSV or writing something uh, or creating a bunch of directory, Everything like that is side effect, and I will try. Uh, I will try it. That's it. <laughs> All right. That's yeah, application. Cool. Yeah. So, so you know, cat is just printing to the screen, but apparently, like the object that creates or whatever is a null value, and and that so with map it prints. It does the action of the function, but it also does this other like you know. Yeah, it, it, it's returning visibly null. Like, yeah. Like uh, if you maybe I don't know if you yeah. That's a good point. Like can. Uh, I would like to try this one with like parentheses around the map. Would it work? I don't know. Uh, not around the map, around cats. To print right. also like the, so it's return one, two, three. This is what it's supposed. And then it's return also like the invisible value of map. I just try that. That's, that would be fun. Yeah, let's see what it does. Yeah, it doesn't like it. <laughs> well, is, are we, oh no. If we if we just cat example, I, do I not have map installed? I don't know. Oh yeah, the the same result. Yeah. Okay. But if you do like um, if you do cat one for example, cat of one, yeah sure. And then uh, uh, put into parentheses the cat. The the same code, yeah. It's returned. <laughs> That's right. a totally. <laughs> that's that's the right thing to put there. Exactly. Exactly. Because you're saying like, what is your output? Exactly. Yeah, the output is like it printing cats in the console, and then the uh, the what the function return is new. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think a lot of functions that don't like what we consider don't have an output actually have an invisible no mm -hmm. as a, like, yeah. like, even though they don't return anything that we think of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is 
I've always just assigned it to um, an object. So I, when I learned walk, it's much cleaner. Yeah, I agree. It seems way more cleaner. Yeah. <clears throat> Were you going to say something, Jeffrey? No. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is similar. Just when you when you're doing these, um, uh, saving gg save, you know, a, a gg plot object to a path, you know, that p map does the, you know, tells you all this information about where it's saving it to, and and p walk doesn't. And these are just messages. I could have done message equals false, but anyway. Okay. Um, okay, so IMAP um, has a second argument, but it's hidden. You don't get to write it. So I probably should have put these two in the opposite opposite order. But when we talk about MAP2, we could have the dot .x argument, um, and then you can talk about the dot .y argument as the names of MT cars. And so what's the function? The function just says, take the name and say, has a mean of, and then you know take them take the mean and so what you get is miles per gallon has a mean of 20.1 you know dispersion has a mean of blah 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 so imap does exactly that right so it does and and notice that like the dot y here is even part of the code um right the dot y is the names of dot x you know, dot y is derived from that. Um, if you're talking about if your dot x is something other than like a named data frame, right? Because this example works because MT cars is a data frame and it has columns and it has names to columns, then um then you know the dot y is names. Um, but if it's not, if it's some other type of object, it your dot y equals sequence along the dot x. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So this is, you know, getting into PMAP a little bit. So PMAP is instead of, um, instead of doing um, just one or two arguments, you might want to do a, a set of arguments, like, a, you know, lots of arguments. Um, so in this um, example we're running, the function is to give us a bunch of uniform values. And we're gonna use all three of the main arguments in, uh, or we're gonna set all three of the main arguments that those random uniforms um, give. So N is the number of um, uniforms that you want. Um, min is the, you know, smallest value of the uniform and max is the max. Um, and so you can you can set a, a data frame or an object um, such that, you know, we're going to then come along and we're going to say, okay, put in all three of those arguments to our unif. And then next, put in three arguments to our unif. Put in three objects to our unif. And notice that the params tibble or tribble. I don't know what a tribble is. Uh, it's got these columns that are named exactly by the arguments on our unif. So you need to name those um, appropriately. Um, and so, uh, right, so we get exactly what you'd expect. One random uniform between one and 10, two random uniforms between 10 and 100, and three random uniforms between 100 and 1,000. Okay, so we could also have that um, um, first argument be a list instead of a triple. Um, so same, same here. You get, you know, you don't get the same results because of course it's random, but you get the same idea, which is one uniform between one and 10 and, you know, et cetera. So personally, my favorite use of, um, of PMAP is when I've got a simulation and I want to run it over all the combinations. So for example, let's say I need um, every combination of all of these three. And I, I brought it down a little bit, but like I want one random uniform between one and 10, and then one random uniform between one and 100, one random uniform between 10 and 10, one random uniform between 10 and 100. So I don't know if people are familiar with this expand grid, 
but it takes, you know, one, two, three, and then 10, a hundred, a hundred, a thousand, and it gets every combo of those variables. So, you know, in this example, there's, there's, um, 12 different combinations of the parameters that I want. And so I expand grid and then I put it into that P map and I get, um, you know, all the random uniforms for the particular, this is, you know, a random uniform between the values 10 and 10. There's two random uniforms between the values 10 and 10. It's kind of silly, but, um, but yeah, this, this has been really helpful for me running simulations where I want to try all different parameter combinations um, in a setting. So yeah, I really like PMAP too. Okay. We're good. We're and, moving along here. For that, for that example, that's where Steph is suggestion of using fur comes in you might want to parallel if you're using simulations with all of those you might want to parallelize these things totally no absolutely i use fur yeah yeah i use future map and put it on a cluster and all that totally it's yeah magic <laughs> it is magic it is magic yeah so i i don't think we talk about it at all in here but but the um um the all of the map functions have a corresponding it's just future underscore and it comes from the package fur um it's just future underscore pmap and then if you tell it how many cores your computer has it'll just do it in parallel and it's real it is really magical it's kind of amazing um okay I have to say, and I don't know if you guys want to spend time talking about this, I understand the reduce functions, but I do not understand this picture. This picture is so like I, this piece over here. So reduce, um, let's maybe go for an example first, and then maybe we can come back to the picture. So reduce, what it does is it, um, it applies functions like f of f of f. And so, um, what what you're wanting to do is put in the first. Oh, do we have? I don't know. I'm not good. Um, so so you have like f of one. Oh, sorry, here f of one, which is like plus. Maybe that's like kind of your initialization. But then f of one plus the next value, and then you get that output, which is three, um, which it says is going to be f of one plus two. And then the then you're gonna have like that value plus the next thing, which is three, plus the next thing, you know, which is four, and and you get 15. So it's it's like f of f of f of f of f. Um, and I wish that we had written that, but um yeah, so so if, like what helped me, like if you rewrite that as a for loop, uh it's help you understanding, like you are basically like um adding to an object that while keeping the same object kind of think of cumulative sum yes I think it, as you read from the top down yeah from here yeah, yeah. So, so you say takes... the first function sorry go for it yeah go ahead no 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 go ahead <laughs> the first function takes the initial value um plus your first value in your um whatever input vector is calculates the result of that function and that then goes passed on to the so next. So why does he have the arrows going up instead of down? I think it's because the he's always done that. He always points to he always points from the argument to where it's coming from. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Like the name of the object when it's called X, it like points to that name or whatever. Yeah, you're totally right. Okay, now I understand this. So this box. I mean, I agree. I, I think the arrows would be, it'd be more intuitive if the arrows went the other way. But if you totally. think about it that way, it's just like, okay, so that, or, or what you do is we always work with the, up, the outside function first, and then yeah. you evaluate it as you go through it, right? So we start with the outside function. It has the, and then you realize the first input from that one, oh, we're not, we can't evaluate that one. Okay, so we go to the next function. Oh, we can't evaluate that first input yet. So we go to the next one. Oh, we can't evaluate that one yet. Mm -hmm. So the next one, ah, now we can evaluate. Now we can evaluate this first so we one. we pass it back. Yeah. And now the second input is, oh, that one. Okay. And now we yeah. pass it back. And then the third, I, I think that's how it is. Like you go down and then you come back. But, <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you evaluate this first one and then that's the input to the second one along with the second value. Um, so, you know, if this is one, two, three, four, five, and we're just adding and this is zero, then, you know, F of one is just one. And then that's going to be one plus two. And this gonna this whole thing is going to be three. And so then you have three plus three. This whole thing is going to be six and then six plus four. Okay. Yeah, that was helpful. I like that. Thank you. 
Um, this I thought was kind of fun. Um, because, you know, reduce, um, takes the object and like adds the next one to it, or, you know, does the next thing, which is like exactly what ggplot is doing, right? It's like layering, um, layering these plots onto one another, right? It starts with an input and it adds, you know, a layer and then it adds a layer and then it adds a layer. Um, and so, um, so we, changed a few things, which is the size of the point. And then I added this color thing to see if it worked. And like, amazingly it did, but I had to change a few things and you can tell me if what I did was wrong. Um, and, and so, um, uh, so originally this code, whoever came before me didn't have the color on here, but I found it too hard to see without the color. So I added the color, but then by adding the color, that meant that I had two sort of things that were changing which made it a little more complicated. Um, and so I was able to use reduce T. I don't think there's a P reduce version, but there's a two reduce. And um, and so I was able to put in this first, um, the size and then the color, and then the function, um, the function I was able to use like a 0.11 and a, or a dot dot one dot dot two and a dot dot three where, um, you know, this took some playing around, but then it totally worked, um, that the initial value, uh, which is that ggplot, um, you know, setting, setting the, the, the plot itself, just the ggplot turned out to be the dot, dot one. And that these were dot, dot two and dot, dot three, which I found really kind of exactly what you'd expect on one hand. And then really hard to wrap my, my, brain around it on the other hand um just that we yeah it you know i would have thought this would be dot x and dot y you know one and two but it wasn't um so i don't know if anyone wants to chime in or i was wondering if it would be easier i'm gonna just dump it in the chat very briefly um and maybe a little bit easier to read if we did it if you started that, I felt okay, first, that was super cool. I was like, how did like, whoa, what? And then I was like, wow, that, that is really clever. So definitely kudos. Cause that was super clever. But I was wondering if it maybe would have been sim not simpler, but more readable. If we put the ggplot call first plus, and then added the reduce, oh. can you do that? Like, I don't know, would that work? Here, let's try it. I also would definitely- And that's the plus argument of gg is plot working as a pipe. It's not a pipe, it's adding stuff. I know, but I was just wondering if it would have worked anyway. I don't oh. know. <laughs> um, I, I, don't see it. I also, just for legibility, I definitely would have changed that um, alpha value to 0 0.5 because with having the point, point 0.1, the point, point 0.2, and then a point 0.5. Oh, it, yeah, 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 right, I, here, right here. Immediately, I was like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that part. <laughs> Sorry, because my brain was like, what's going on? Yeah. Sorry. I need to let me... No Why worry, I do that so all the time. time. Correctly. All that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's run this. And you yeah, get that. Yes. Okay, and then your idea is removing it. Just to take the initial value yeah. out. Yeah, and adding to digit, but I don't think it would work. And then you need um, to get rid of the init, and also you need to get rid of the, yeah, that part. I think you saw the change. plus there, but do we put it like that or something? Oh, I would have said no plus. Um, no plus. Oh, that's a good point. Now I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think the plus is not going to work no matter what. It's just know. adding to a grid. It's not. Working. You also need to change the dot dot two needs to be dot dot one and dot dot three needs yeah. to be dot dot two. Right. Yeah, but like you need the plus here to get the second and third layer, but you need mm. the plus here to get the first layer. That's a good point. Sorry, I didn't really think about that. Yeah. Thank you. You need a pipe for that one? Um, I think it's a you pipe. You can't really yeah. pipe it, though, because it's plusing, right? It's not um, piping. Yeah, it's yeah, the but, but the plus, plus comes in 15. I think you need a pipe there and then keep that plus in, in line 15. You can't pipe? Here? No, you can't. Yeah. Sorry. Why not? Let's plus. try it. Five. It's not going to work, though. Well, it's going to give you that, like, did you mean to do a plus instead of a pipe? <laughs> no. 
Like yeah. I cannot breathe. I I am I'm not I don't know enough like OGG plot and all, but in my mind it's just adding to the grid, to the uh -huh. grid object. Yeah. And I don't think like we can do that. No, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. <clears throat> yeah. Ah, oh, bugger it. I was hoping because I was thinking that would be really elegant if but you're right. I was thinking of it as a pipe, not not the plus, but I always accidentally use a pipe in ggplot and I always get those messages like, did you mean to use a plus instead of yeah, a Yeah, pipe? yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. you should have used a pipe instead of plus when you created ggplot too. <laughs> it saved us all some trouble with one pipe. But I mean, that would have been all. pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a different thing, but I don't know. Maybe this is a philosophical debate for a different... <laughs> I like the plus. Okay, uh, this not covered was um, was again what somebody else put, and we still have a few more minutes, so let's let's keep going a little bit. Um, so this again came up, I think, in the chat, um, and these still work, um, but the preference and and I think it works better. I, I really like it myself personally because um, again, it's separating like. Um, you know, now, now we're separating what the function is, separate that from the, what the recursion is from the, how do you put the results together? And, and to me, that helps a lot in my own brain of like what the pieces are. So I'm supportive of the doing the map, creating a list and then binding it together afterward. That, that again, to me feels like the right thing to do. Um, so, uh, you know, here it's just done a couple of different ways. Um, the function is to, um, uh, the, the function is a function of uh, this variable N, which is the number of rows that they're going to take in the header. And so they take either 10 or 20 rows. So take the first 10 rows and then, um, and then summarize them or uh, then find the average of those first 10 or 10 rows or first 20 rows. Anyway, it doesn't really matter a lot. Um, but the first way just with the map, like we've seen before, um, runs this function and then gets the output um, as a list. So, you know, this is with n equals 10 rows and then, you know, the second object with n equals 20 rows and the map um, df R, so data frame with the rows bound, um, would give, you know, what you'd expect as a new data frame uh, where you have the rows bound, but that, again, the um, recommendation at this point is to map and then do the list bind um, for that. Yeah, so far so good? That's so good. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, pluck um is you know what's interesting is that um i think whoever wrote these slides maybe did it on version 1 because i don't think pluck is in this chapter um but it made me think about um i think i put it in here yeah so so the, somebody else wrote all of these and maybe we can just talk about it really quickly but pluck is just a way of like pulling out a, a particular item um and so when I was reading through this, I um, I went back to the very top of the chapter where they talk about shortcuts um, for extracting elements and, and they actually use the pluck function. So I just put down um, some of Hadley's, oh shoot, did I not put my list? Okay, sorry. Oh yeah, this is it, this is it. So, um, so this is Hadley's, um, you know, my list. And every single time throughout this whole book club, when I'm reading, I have to go and type what this is. Cause I look at something like this and I'm like, I have no idea what that object looks like. Um, and of course this is, <laughs> this is what it looks like. It's like this crazy, I don't, I don't even know, nested thing of things and whatnot. Um, but you can see, you know, uh, the X's and the Y's and the Z's and this one, you know, that the third list thing doesn't have any Z's in it. And the Y's are two different. Um, 
the whys are two different length or three different lengths and, and all that. And so, you know, he has all these pluck things that you can pluck out the first object and that'll pluck out the first object, you know, for each, um, for each, uh, elements. yeah. Elements, I think. Yep. Although this is the first X and the first Y and the first Z. So it goes, it's, it's, it's taking this. It's taking this. Can... Sorry, I can't put these all on the same screen. Here, no, let's... it's taking minus two, minus four. Uh, no, go down. That's fine. Uh, we have it. Minus one, minus one, minus one. So yeah, it's the first element of the list, which is uh, the, your first list, yes. Yeah, so it's just... If you if you use tier if you use tier uh, list you yeah so it's just taking that and so if you take the second one it'll yeah it'll give you list. yeah that whole yeah. list whatever um okay um but anyway so so then I was playing around with it more um and um and using um map okay here we go this is what i want to say and then i think we can probably be done um that when that map which we sort of saw um actually when i was doing that length unique thing and i accidentally put in map mt cars comma one that was like a pluck thing right because length unique was just the number one so i was just plucking out the first um well in which this is really interesting because notice that pluck takes the first item, but map takes the first entry. Wait, sorry, hold on. Let me... Do you guys see the difference between this? So map takes negative one, negative two, negative three, and pluck takes... And that's yep. because map iterates over yeah. all the elements. And so map is iterating over the first list and saying, okay, let me get the first item from that first list. And then it goes to the second one, first item, third. Totally. It's, it's, so the, the, I think I read this somewhere else and forgive me if I'm taking over here, your, your no, no, no. we were just about to say, yeah. um, is I think the map, uh, my list comma one is a shorthand for map my, con my list comma pluck one. Like it actually uses pluck underneath the hood, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, you need to, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That totally makes a lot of sense. Huh. Okay, so anyway, then you can do it by whatever. So you can you can plug in, um, you know, the Y elements and and take each one of them. And I wish we had, it's harder to see. It's hard when you can't see that. Um, you know, so now you can see the Y elements. So you take the Y elements and you, and you, you know, take the first one, but if you don't put that in there, um, it, it gets mad because I've done double here, yep. but if I don't put double there, then it's fine because it can, uh, because it can pull out the Y elements as list items and, um, and it's happy to have them as, as different lengths. Um, it returns your list instead of a vector also. Right, 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 right. Yeah, of course. It <laughs> changed it to a list because that's the default in map. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, and then and then if you know, I guess here's just one more. Um that if you do Z, it's like, oh, I got confused because the third item didn't have a Z. But if you put um, what is it, default dot default. Um then it'll it'll just say, oh, it doesn't have that item. I'm happy to tell you what it is. So Yeah, right. I have right on love for that. You know, when you don't have like uh, when you are like using that, uh, and uh, like let's say like you, you create a function that targets something that does not exist. I, I use it in a, a try catch, like the fail with mm -hmm. function from like the totally. but this is better, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So okay, I think that's it. And I think we're at our time. So Thank we you have all. just one minute to come. I think it's a great chapter just to summarize it. I think on my practice, I have just touched the beginning of what can be with functional programming. Uh, there's still a lot to know, like as Derek mentioned, like this also bridge you to other like programming language that use also uh, functional programming. This is also like uh, 
So, but I think like just having like the first map or the first uh, V apply whatever's already bring a lot of uh, power to your experiences and our users. Totally. Um, but after that, you can definitely like put your, I don't know, like in the big machine. So this is how I feel about it. So it's also exciting. So it's like, it's, uh, I don't necessarily, a lot of time I've used case for everything here, but this is definitely exciting as learning new stuff. I yeah. Think. Yeah. That's how I feel. This was, and it was a great presentation and that was great that you do yeah. like example, try and error. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, when I'm reading the book, I'm always like, okay, what if I did it like slightly differently? What would happen? So great. No, it was great. All right. So, yeah. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, I'm going to do not forget to type ends.